Welcome back to WMNF Tampa Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. You're listening to 88.5 FM and WMNF.org. And again, if you'd like to talk about anything you have heard today so far, you can give us a call at 813-239-9663. I will be opening the phone lines later on. You can also email us at dj at WMNF.org or or text us at 813-433-0885. We turn now to our next segment. We examine the state of Black Tampa, and there's a forum coming up with that title. It's on Friday, June 3rd in Ybor City. And joining us now by Zoom is its host, Gary Hartfield, an entrepreneur and community leader. Welcome to WMNS Tuesday Cafe, Gary. Hey, good morning. How are you doing this morning, Sean? I'm doing great. Nice to meet you. And uh, thanks so much for coming on the show. So what can you tell us uh, about what the state of Black Tampa is in 2022? Wow, so that has so many different uh, tangents that we could speak to, but most importantly, we wanted to have a conversation and create a safe space uh, for everyone to be uh, involved in intelligent dialogue around economics, around social political issues, and around health disparities. As we come out of this global pandemic, um, there are a number of issues that are highlighted in the community. And we wanted to make sure uh, in lieu of just circular reasoning um, and having one-off conversations, we wanted to make sure that we're more intentional going into 2022 and beyond about developing an agenda to address these issues, Sean. So tell us about the, the event that you have coming up in early June in Ybor City. Please don't mention any prices, but just let people know where they can find more information or what they might be able to expect. Definitely. Thank you. So uh, please go to inventbrite.com uh, and just look for the refinery exchange and you'll be able to get more information about the event uh, as well as secure tickets, sponsorships and or t uh, premium seating is available through eventbrite.com. And just again, search for the Refinery Exchange. And the event again is, is primarily about having a safe space here in the city of Tampa with so much happening. Um, we have more than $10 billion of development going on in our city. And we're poised to be one of the great cities that's on the cusp of technological advantages and kind of inspiration and development, uh, as well as the other things that we have in terms of growth and support for the community, we wanted to make sure that the Black community is engaged and is a part of the prosperity. I want to remind people that we're speaking with Gary Hartfield, who's an entrepreneur and community leader He's part of this forum that's coming up on June 3rd in Ybor City called the State of Black Tampa. And that's what we're talking about this the rest of this hour. So you mentioned, Gary, a couple of times there, the refinery exchange. So please tell our listeners what is the, the refinery exchange. So thank you. That's, um, that's a very good question. The refinery exchange, um, as we thought about how do we kind of define a, a label and terminology for what it is that we're trying to do. So the refinery uh, spoke to our mission the loudest in that when you go through the refinery process and if that's a precious metal, uh, you're able to extract those impurities from, the, from that precious metal through the refinery process. And from that becomes a more pure, a more solid uh, metal or precious metal. And for the refinery exchange, we thought that as we have these conversations, we're able to extract the noise. We're able to extract those things that uh, move us away from being a community uh, that is solidly together, uh, moving forward positively on one agenda. Uh, so as we refine the conversation, we refine the ideas, we refine uh, relationships, uh, and we move together as one Tampa uh, with all communities, the Black community, the Hispanic community, the white community, uh, the Asian community, the Muslim community, and so forth. We all move together in lockstep uh, 
as we know, uh, and we've heard a number of times uh, from the old cliche that a rising tide lifts all boats. Our guest is Gary Hartfield, an entrepreneur and community leader. He's part of a meeting that's coming up, the State of Black Tampa. And that's what we're talking about the rest of this hour on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. If you'd like to weigh in, please give us a call, 813-239-9663. You can email DJ at WMNF or text 813-433-0885. What do you think about the state of Black Tampa or the state of wherever you live? How is the, the community wherever you live? Let's hear about what you think. Gary, you mentioned health disparities. So, uh, you know, earlier in this show, you may not have heard this conversation, but we were talking about how there are so many deaths from suicides and alcoholism during the pandemic for all of America, but especially in communities of color. That's one of the health disparities that you might be talking about. What are some of the others health disparities that you're that you're uh, concerned about? We certainly want to speak to mental health. Um, and the disparities as it relates to the Black community. Uh, we also want to speak to uh, long COVID and COVID-related issues and how they have disproportionately affected the Black community. And an integral part of that is making sure that the community is aware of the various options uh, that's available through the Affordable Care Act to make sure that all communities are connected with uh, healthcare, and that they are really making sure that their mental and physical health uh, is being managed and maintained. Well, we have a phone call. So let's, uh, if you don't mind, let's go to the, f the phone lines and we can speak with, with Connie in Tampa. I can't get her on right this second, but uh, we'll, we'll try to come back to her in just a minute. Uh, I should remind people that you're listening to WMNF Tampa, and we're hearing about the state of Black Tampa from Gary Hartfield, an entrepreneur and community leader. There's a forum coming up on Friday, June 3rd about the state of Black Tampa, and uh, we will. Uh, he's going to talk more about that as we go on, but we do have Connie on the line. Welcome to the show, Connie. Yes. Uh, how are you doing? I don't know how to feel. I mean, I applaud all efforts for this engagement. Uh, but we're in a crisis, and I think uh, when I hear of, you know, organizations and efforts to rebrand or restart uh, these conversations, it sometimes confuses the community as if nothing is happening. Uh, like right now, we're in the middle of major gentrification. Who can't see that? Uh, you would have to be almost deaf not to know, uh, say, the Hannah Project on uh, Hannah uh, and the way it came about that really pushes black contractors off the table from being able to be competitive. Uh, we have the mayor's multi-crime housing bill that targets black families. And then in the middle of all of this, uh, voter suppression, uh, but we have the NAACP that has been a leading force in some of these discussions without, you know, some of the participants uh, not engaging where we are already at. So, um, like I said, you know, the, the more conversation, I guess, the better. But one of the criticisms that I would constantly make to this Black community that we have been about talk and restart, talk and restart, and limited action. And to uh, force the inclusion of others when they are witnessing and can see what is happening fundamentally to Black voices, Black voting rights, uh, 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 criminalization, the lack of any reform to deal with our disparity is not there. And so I would just encourage people to not exclude the work of some of the, our founding organizations and let's see how to build bridges as opposed, to, as opposed to starting new. Thank you so much. Connie, thanks for those thoughts. Let's turn to our guest. I want to remind people this is Gary Hartfield, and he's uh, hosting a forum that's coming up on Friday, June 3rd, the state of Black Tampa. So, Gary, what would you say about some of the things that Connie brought up there? I, I think 
we want to make sure that we are building bridges. Um, an integral part of the program will be uh, the NAACP. Uh, they uh, have a representative, uh, Miss Yvette Lewis, that will be on the panel uh, speaking to civic and political engagement. And if I can interrupt you for a second, Gary, I apologize, but I just I feel that it's the time for me to point out that uh, Yvette Lewis is a member of the WMNF Board of Directors. So uh, I just wanted to point that out and con continue, please. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, we certainly do not want to um, not recognize other work that's being done in the community. Uh, we are simply uh, an additional voice. Um, and I think we bring an added value to the table uh, when we do include all communities in the conversation. Uh, we indeed cannot move forward uh, as a community uh, without including everyone. Uh, what is tragic is, for example, what has just happened in Buffalo, New York, uh, where 10 of our community members were murdered when they got up that morning, um, they expected to go to the grocery store, which was um, in a food desert, uh, but they were expecting to go to the grocery store. They were able to get their groceries and they expected and their families expected for them to return home. They did not do anything wrong that day. The only thing uh, that was held against them at that time was the fact that they were black. And an individual drove hours um, to uh, terrorize and kill 10 individuals and wound three others. So it's important to recognize that in order to, to heal, in order to stop this terrorism, in order to move uh, the American community forward, we have to do it together. We cannot do it in isolation. Our guest is Gary Hartfield, who has a forum coming up called The State of Black Tampa. It's Friday, June 3rd in Ybor City, and we'll link to more information on our website, WMNF.org. You're listening to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canaan. It's 1043 in the morning. If you'd like to weigh in, you can call in at 813-239-9663. You can text 813-433-0885 or email dj at WMNF.org. So Gary, in, while you were talking about the, the horrible tragedy that happened in Buffalo, you brought up an issue that is a, a, a systemic problem in, mm -hmm. in communities of color, and that's food deserts. That's where, where people who are in economically impoverished parts of town just simply don't have access to healthy food. How would you say that the, how would you rate Tampa on that and what, how could we be doing better? So in Tampa, um, in the city proper, uh, we still have some issues. And those issues we have to address from a historical context, Sean. Uh, there's a book uh, called The Color of Law. And it speaks to the federal, state, and local um, um, initiatives to disenfranchise the Black community that were delivered by our federal, state, and local government. And in doing so, they created these uh, communities where Blacks uh, did not have uh, the resources that were necessary that were available in their community and created food deserts as well as other issues in the community. So we have to address that, uh, this issue from a historical context. In the city proper, within the city limits, uh, we still have those issues. And it's amazing uh, here in 2022 that we will still have uh, food deserts um, in the richest and uh, wealthiest and most technologically advanced nation in the history of recorded, um, recorded history. Uh, we still have these issues, not only here in Tampa, but around our nation. So it's a, it's a serious concern uh, and there are lingering issues here in the city of Tampa. Our guest is Gary Hartfield, an entrepreneur and community leader whose forum is called the State of Black Tampa. It will be Friday, June 3rd in Ybor City. You're listening to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. 
Gary, just then you were you were talking about systemic racism and hi the history of racist policies, not just racism where where an individual's heart is in, a, in it ha has evil in it and hates a, a different race. We're talking what you were talking about is a built-in system, systemic racism, and that whole concept has been under a microscope lately with the Florida legislature and the governor saying that that kind of analysis of systemic racism, historical racism, is simply not going to be allowed to be taught in schools in the state of Florida. How do you, how do you have schools? How do you teach history or, or teach really any subject, sociology really any subject, by covering up or ignoring systemic racism and the history of racism in this country how do you do, how do you do that and how why would that I, I assume that you agree with me and with others that that would be a bad thing and how how would that be damaging i i do agree with you sean um and i am concerned that the governor um uh, would not have uh, enough input or um uh, dialogue around him that would help him um, make a better choice in that regard. But to that end, uh, Sean, in the gubernatorial election, um, when the present governor DeSantis was elected, there was a margin of maybe about 30,000 votes. So that was a very small margin. And um, at that time, uh, the Democratic uh, gubernatorial candidate, Mr. Andrew Gillum, um, held a very significant presence as it relates to uh, being a front runner um, to oppose the governor in the next election. So we find that when competition, viable competition is there, uh, we're forced to govern from the middle. When viable competition is not there, then you can govern from extremes. So I say that to say that the refinery exchange for individuals with like minds uh, that are sensitive, that are empathetic to these kinds of concerns, Sean, we are uh, collectively getting together in this safe space to talk about issues such as the one uh, that we just spoke about, like critical race theory. So in that conversation, we have to define what our agenda is and then how do we move forward collectively to exercise our vote? Um, now, there have been other measures passed to minimize or disenfranchise that vote, but how do we collectively move forward here in the state of Florida, in the city of Tampa, in Hillsborough County, in the Bay Area, and indeed, and indeed in the state of Florida, how do we mobilize around a refined mindset? How do we start moving forward on a singular agenda. Now, there will always be differing opinions, but we have to define an agenda of three to five items that we're gonna fight on one page for, and then we present those to our candidates and to our elected leaders, and we move forward on those agendas. We can't just keep having these circular conversations about these issues. If not, we're not gonna progress, we're gonna regress. Our guest is Gary Hartfield. The State of Black Tampa is a forum that he is helping to put together Friday, June 3rd in Ybor City. You're listening to WMNF, WMNF Tampa I'm 80, on 88.5 FM and WMNF.org. I'm Sean Canan. Hey, so Alfredo in Lakeland has been holding a while. Let, let's go now to the phones and see what Alfredo has to say. Hi, Alfredo. Hi. I totally agree with everything that Mr. Hartfield was saying. Okay, I, t I agreed something uh, some, somewhat. I didn't hear too, too much of what the, young, the, the older lady was saying, but uh, I heard some of it, and I agreed with that. Uh, I would like to invite Mr. Hartfield to come to Lakeland the first Monday of June to the Lakeland Commissioner's um, meeting and to... And, and, uh, to speak on his experiences in Lakeland, in, uh, in Tampa, concerning tenants' rights. Okay, that issue has 
even been brought up in Lakeland. That issue has been brought up in Lakeland. So, uh, all right, well, I'm going to put you down since you have the phone ringing, but I think you got your point across there, Alfredo. So, um, Gary, what about tenants' rights? It is an issue that has been talked about a lot in St. Petersburg, a lot in Tampa. In fact, there's going to be a workshop at the city of Tampa this Thursday about tenants' rights. And uh, Alfredo seems frustrated that they're not talking about that in Lakeland. What would you recommend to people in Lakeland and, uh, to talk about what's, why is that an important issue? So my approach to this is kind of two prong. I think first is very important that we analyze this from the landlord's perspective and try to define where the landlord is coming from. In our market, uh, they are capitalistic in nature, meaning that when there's an opportunity, uh, we develop a solution that's uh, service or a product, and we capitalize on that and hopefully profit from it. So we're seeing that in this market. Now, in that same breath as landlords, as property owners, we have to do everything that we do in this capitalistic market with the same amount of civility and support for mankind. Right now, our tenants are suffering. Uh, it is unprecedented uh, what is um, being kind of um, dealt with in this in this in this in this economy, where gas prices are at record highs, where uh, grocery stores uh, and groceries are at record highs, and now we have um, tenant rent in also mortgages, we have tenant rent that are uh, extremely high. So what was one time affordable and one of the attractive features about our state and our cities has now become the exact opposite because we are so expensive. So for the landlords, we have to, from a true American uh, heart standpoint, whatever we do, we have to do with civility. Um, if prices are so high and tenants are not empowered, then indeed you do not have anyone to rent to. So the whole idea of being a landlord and being able to uh, meet the expenses of being a landlord are compromised if tenants are not supported. At the, at the same time, our tenants have to make sure that as we move through this very tumultuous time in our country's history, um, that we are doing so in exercising financial literacy, that we are exercising uh, our political and social initiatives. Um, if we have a voice at the county commission, if we have a voice at the city commission, if we have a voice at the state level and the federal level, then we're able to influence those outcomes. But if we have not established that voice, then it's going to be very difficult to establish outcomes. So I, I, I say that, and I hope I addressed the question, but I, I think landlords have to do whatever it is that we do. I am a landlord. Whatever it is that we do in terms of supporting our tenants, we have to do that with a heart of civility. And our tenants, we have to make sure that we are moving forward in this tumultuous time in our country's history with one, financial literacy, but two, uh, galvanizing around this idea that the, the way we enforce change, the way that we request change is by a collective voice. Our guest is Gary Hartfield, an entrepreneur and community leader, talking about the state of Black Tampa, which is a forum he's hosting on Friday, June 3rd in Ybor City. And Gary, let me push back a little bit about what you were talking about, the, the tenants. Um, I, I don't think that anyone would disagree that in an ideal world, that a, a landlord having a, a good heart and thinking about their, their tenants first and foremost and their well-being there, that would be a great situation. But the situation that we're in is that a lot of landlords see the landscape and the gentrification that uh, Connie was talking about earlier 
and they see that there's a high demand for housing and that there's people who are living on the streets because there's just not enough housing perhaps or for whatever reason and the, there are landlords out there who raise the rents tremendously because they can and I, I would guess that Alfredo and and the people that I've heard in St. Pete and Tampa are talking about well, what do you do then when you when you've created a, this housing crisis this unaffordable housing crisis simply because uh, just relying on people's hearts isn't uh, always going to work. No, you're you're absolutely right, um, and that's a that's one of the remnants of of capitalism, um, in that um, in an economy that's truly capitalistic in nature, um, sometimes individuals will uh, move toward profit as opposed to uh, civility. So I think. In, in, in that regard, we have to hold officials accountable um, and understand that if there's anything that can be done to minimize the impact on tenants and their ability to afford rent, um, I think that absolutely has to be done. Now, how we do that, Sean, I'm not exactly sure. So I, I don't want to get out a book beyond my skis, but I do support the idea that um, if there's any way to support tenants and keep rent prices within reason for tenants to, to make rent affordable, uh, then I think that's certainly the way to go. Uh, but I think more importantly is the tenants uh, in our community have to move forward with a with a uh, singular agenda uh, and vote our interests. Our guest is Gary Hartfield, an entrepreneur and community leader talking about the state of Black Tampa, which is the title of a forum that's coming up on Friday, June 3rd. We're, we're getting close to the end of the show, but I did want to ask you, Gary, about the state of Black Tampa when it comes to these, this, these historically Black cemeteries that we've been finding, uh, that the community has, has found. A lot of the Tampa Bay Times research and a lot of archaeologists have, have found these Black cemeteries that seemingly were forgotten and built over. How does that relate to the state of Black Tampa? So it is a tragedy. Uh, that that would happen and that speaks to a historical perspective on how sometimes um, individuals have uh, discounted the value of Black lives. So to that end, I think uh, we have to restore those sacred grounds where individuals and loved ones have been buried and we have to make that right. Um, there's nowhere in our country where you can go and uh, develop or, or build on, on graves. Um, and it is a tragedy that this is being uncovered. And I think we have to speak to that um, on a local level as well as a state level and respond to that and restore those, those landmarks and those graves uh, and make sure that those individuals rest in peace. Gary, if people want to find out more about the state of Black Tampa, the forum that you're hosting on Friday, June 3rd, remind them again where they can get that information. Eventbrite.com uh, and search for the Refinery Exchange. Again, that's eventbrite.com, the Refinery Exchange. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Gary. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Sean. It is truly my pleasure. I'm really glad you were able to come on. Thank you so much. Uh, Gary Hartfield is part of a program next week called The State of Black Tampa, Friday, June 3rd in Ybor City. I want to thank John Dunn for answering phones today. I want to thank our earlier guests uh, for uh, the, their, their um, information that they gave us. And you can find out more about that on WMNF.org. You have been listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. This show is every Tuesday morning at 10 if you like the programming on 88.5 FM, please consider making a donation at WMNF.org. In this time slot tomorrow, Shelly will host Midpoint and she'll talk about children's mental health. Next up, we have Wavemakers with Janet and Tom Sherberger, and their guest is Tom Gribben, who will talk about books, music, comedy, and hot runners. That's coming up after NPR headlines. You're listening to WMNF Tampa, St. Petersburg, Sarasota, and Lakeland. Thanks so much for listening.
and supporting community radio on WMNF.